Hello and welcome to our Nativity Devotionals. We are in devotional number 20, which if you've been following day to day means it is December 20th and we are so glad to have you with us. Thank you for your faithfulness just to be with us for each and every one of these. And now as we uh, get ready to share with you our devotions, we're also going to share with you um, just the pictures that have been sent in. And some of these are going to be kind of, you know, reminders of pictures you've already seen as we uh, continue with our story of the Nativity Devotionals, taking a look at the birth of Jesus Christ uh, through the lens of Scripture. And so um, as we do that, let me just say hello to you. I'm Jim DeVore, the pastor of Cornerstone Church of Little Rock in Southern California. We're just out of LA about, you know, about, oh, about 45, 50, 60 miles uh, north east of Los Angeles. If you're unfamiliar and you've stumbled across us, we are glad to have you here. We are in Luke chapter 2, verse 21. Luke chapter 2, verse 21. And um, as we begin uh, this passage, we um, we want to just uh, just read the passage. We are. This is immediately after the birth of Jesus. The shepherds have come and gone. I guess immediately isn't the right word because we're about to find out it's going to be eight days later. But let's pick it up and let the scriptures do the talking, shall we? Luke chapter 2, uh, verse 21. At the end of eight days, when he, Jesus, was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. And when the time came for their purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens the womb shall be called holy to the Lord and to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. This is a very simple passage. It's a matter of fact passage of Joseph and Mary doing what is required of a typical Jewish family. Now that they have given birth to their firstborn son, there are some things they do to show their honor and appreciation to God. So let's begin with verse 21. At the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. Naming the son was very important to a family, and they didn't announce the name of that son until the circumcisions, which was on the eighth day. And so uh, Jesus uh, being born eight days later, he's circumcised and they announce his name. They've both known his name for a long time. Since the angel visit, they were instructed and told to call him Jesus. This is a simple act of obedience here. They have picked the name Jesus, not because it was their idea, but because it was the idea of God for them to do that. Okay, let's, let me just pause here and figure out What's going on with our uh, slide here? Okay, uh, let me see if we can uh, solve this problem. I will be right back with you. All righty, I think I have solved the problem. Wasn't much of a break for you, was it? But it was a break for me. And so let's see if I have fixed the issue here. We should now be able to go to this. You've seen that, but we should not go to blank now. There we go. Okay. I knew I wanted something special showing when I was telling you this very verse here. At the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. So Mary and Joseph are going through simple acts of obedience. And the angel said that God says he should be called Jesus. And so they call him Jesus. Now, when we get to verse 22, and when the time came for the purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. I'm assuming you're going to uh, note that the pictures aren't quite going with the story, but uh, we don't have pictures um, sent to us from the nativity of the temple scene. We, I don't understand why they don't have the temple scenes there. Uh, so we're going to continue to look at manger scenes as we continue through our story. And some of these you've seen, and a couple of these might be brand new. It says here then, and when the time came for the purification, according to the law of Moses, they brought him up to Jerusalem, present him to the Lord. Their purification is going to be the purification of Mary having given birth. Okay. And so they, so when her time passes for her purification, so she can then go to the temple, then they come to the temple and they present Jesus to the Lord. Okay, and one of the things they're going to do there is they're going to present an offering, and the offering that they present is going to be based on, on their own income, their own kind of social status. So watch what verse 23 and 24 tell us, okay? 
as it is written in the law of the Lord, every male who first opens a womb shall be called holy to the Lord. So Jesus is the, is the firstborn son um, in Mary's womb. And so he comes out. So he is called holy. Okay. So there's no coincidence that Jesus is the first. And not only because he has to be for her to be a virgin to give birth, but he's first following in the idea of he's going to be the one who's called holy to the Lord. Okay, so he is presented. And what does it say also in verse 24? And to offer a sacrifice according to what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. Now, by the way, the law of the Lord doesn't start with a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. It starts with a, a bull and then a sheep. And then it drops down to these uh, pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. The idea is that if you can afford it, you give your best, which is going to be a bull. If you can't afford the bull, then maybe you give a lamb. If you can't afford a lamb, then you should be able to, to scrounge up enough money to bring the turtle doves or the two young pigeons. And so this gives us a picture, an idea of the, uh, of the poverty level of Joseph and Mary. Jesus did not come in to a wealthy family, okay? He, he came into poverty. What, what's the point of that? The point of that is that he came to identify with all men, the lowest of the low, so that nobody could say, well, Jesus doesn't understand poverty. No, he came that way. Well, can, does Jesus understand wealth? Well, of course he understands wealth. He's the king of kings. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. I mean, wealth is not an issue to him. He came from the wealthiest of wealth, the kingdom of heaven. He comes down then to the lowest of low to a situation of poverty. He's born in a manger. He's born in a stable or some type of barn or a cave or where the animals are. Okay. He's not visited by royalty yet. He's visited by, he's visited by shepherds, the lowest of the low. And so his family even is a family that struggles financially. And so we get a picture here of two things not just the financial status of Jesus coming as humble as possible, but we also get the picture of Mary and Joseph obediently following the things of the Lord. Here they have God, very God in their midst, the angel pronouncement of the Messiah, and yet they still know they must go through the regular process of what it means to bring a child to the Lord. They're still going to obey the process of what God has called them to do. Sometimes great and mighty things happen to us. God's done great things for us. And suddenly we think that's a liberty to not continue to do the regular things he asked for us, you know, like reading the word and attending church and praying to him. Oh, I've had a great spiritual event. I don't need to do any of those things. No, no. We do the regular things to demonstrate our obedience to God out of faithfulness, whether he's doing great things for us or things aren't so great. Thank you for joining us for our nativity devotional so glad to have you with us come back again tomorrow by the way this is the 20th and if this is in the morning and you are watching this on december 20th be sure to come by and see um our our nativity not devotionals but our nativity pictures in 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 just in grand style, in the sense that we will be having back to Bethlehem tonight, and you'll be able to drive through between 6 and 7.30 and see living pictures of first century Bethlehem, including a wonderful manger scene. So that's at the church, 8533 East Avenue T, um, Little Rock, California, from 6 to 7.30, be sure to join us tonight. So glad to have you for our devotionals. We'll be back with another one again for you tomorrow. God bless you and Merry Christmas. So glad to have you with us.